Hi guys, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our color palette assignment. We're going to create a color palette using Adobe Illustrator. And you can really make color palette many different ways, but Illustrator makes it um, really easy and you can do a lot of fun things with it. So let's pop open Illustrator and let's create a new document. And let's use a letter size for this. Again, they're easy to print out. And um, before we begin our color palette, I want to just briefly go over a little bit about color itself. Um, I'm going to post a bonus video that goes a lot more into detail about uh, just sort of basic color theory. Um, and it's something that every designer really should know because, of course, combining good colors is something that we have to do all the time as a designer. Um, and really, you know, if you were to pick the sort of two elements that really strike a person first about a garment or an outfit or a look, um, it's going to be shape and color. And we're really going to focus in on color today. And um, let's just, before we begin, take a quick look at our basic color wheel. Now here's our basic color wheel. Um, there are much more complicated ones, but for our purposes, we're gonna keep it simple. And we see um, you know, our basic hue colors in here. And we have yellow, orange, red, purple, blue, and green. And those are our basic hue colors. And you can see they're divided up in these little sections. And the color wheel is important because when you sort of get into color theory, um, most of color theory really relates to how the colors are placed on the color wheel and their relations. Um, and again, if you want to um, learn a little bit more about basic color theory and how we develop colors that look good together, um, colors that are, are nice, that don't clash with each other, um, you know, a little bit of basic color theory is really important. And I'm going to post that other sort of bonus video that goes into a lot more detail about um, our color theory. But for this project, what you're going to need to know is um, basically that, um, oop, there we go, um, orange, I'm sorry, yellow, orange, and red are our warm colors. So warm, think of like fire and the sun. Um, those are our warm colors up here. Our cool colors are purple, blue, and green. Um, think of sort of water or plants. Um, those are going to be our cool colors. Um, and that's important because um, what your color palette assignment is going to do is it's going to ask for so many um, color swatches in our warm color range and so many swatches in our cool color range. Now it's also going to ask for neutral colors and neutral colors are kind of our brownie earth tones, our tans, um, different colors of browns, sort of chocolates, coffees, um, and it can also include other sort of muted colors like an olive green or like a russet, anything that's like a little bit more toned down, a little earthy, has a little brown in it. Um, okay, so now that we understand what our cool, our warm, and our neutral colors are going to be, let's start building our color palette. So I'm going to go back over to Illustrator, and we have sort of our blank canvas here. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm really going to just start on our color swatches. So what I want to do first is I want to decide what shape my color swatch is going to be. And you can make any sort of shape for a color swatch. You can keep it simple and just go ahead and use your rectangle tool or the ellipse tool to create a basic shape for um, your color swatch. If you want to be a little fancier, you of course can use your pen tool to create any shape that you want. So you, maybe you want like, you know, a cute little heart or something to be your color palette shape. And then of course, if you want it to be even, we're just going to reflect it or symmetrical, I should say. Um, now this is going to give you two separate pieces, so if you do use the reflect on your shape because you want it symmetrical, just go ahead and once both halves are created, 
go ahead and use your pen tool to connect both ends. Those are just a little bit here. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I'm accidentally, <laughs> I'm clicking the wrong mouse button. Sorry, my finger was in the wrong place. So we'll just cl close that up here and close it up down here. And once you have, you do want a closed shape, of course, because it's going to be easier to fill with the color that you want. So whatever you choose, doesn't matter. Um, just get your basic shape ready. I think I'll just use our circle. Maybe size it down a little bit, because that's awful. Okay. Uh, here's something, I, I, I accidentally double click, so I've opened up isolation mode, and, and maybe this has happened to you. Um, what I want to do is right click and exit I isolation mode, okay? So isolation mode will kind of lock other elements that you don't want. So here's my little swatch, okay? And what I want to do is really begin my color palette with sort of a starter color. So you might be sort of thinking in your head of what colors you want to do, and people take inspiration from lots of different things. You can just sort of go and choose your favorite color to start from, but if you want to um, go ahead and use an image, you can go and look up an image. So, you know, a lot of times designers and things like that will go ahead and use, you know, images uh, from nature or just an image that they find really pleasing and sample colors from that. So uh, let's get one with a lot of nice sort of colors. Now this looks beautiful. Now look beautiful. What's wrong with the tropical sunset? And so let's maybe try this and you can utilize this in your actual image if you'd like. So if you are taking inspiration from an image, it's nice to um, include it. You don't have to. But just for working, it's going to be easier because now you can sample colors from it. Okay? Um, so let's start with our warm colors. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to get my first color. So let's get that nice sort of orange right there. And again, anything I click on over here, it's going to just pop right into my uh, color swatch right here. Okay, so we can start with that. Now, um, I, you don't need a black border if you want, but of course, if you want one, you can put one on there. What you are going to need to do is um, put the color value. So this is really important when we are creating color palettes for fashion design. So we want um, two things. We want some sort of numerical value for this color and also a color name. So typically in a fashion house, when we create a color palette, um, we will assign a color um, a number value and a sort of word value. Um, and this, again, will help us um, in, the, in the development process and also in the creation process. So when we are doing things that um, test and preview the colors, um, um, so a lot of times when we are using our own color palette and we're not buying fabric um, just straight off the market and most um, larger companies will do this. They'll come up with their own color palettes and have their own fabric made. Um, what they'll do is they'll create what's called a lab dip and the mill will do a, a several different dyeing methods to try to achieve a singular color. Um, and we'll send the lab dips to the fashion company and they will choose which one best matches their color and then they will do the bulk dyeing using that dye formula. Now this is very important because every um, fiber or every uh, piece of fabric is going to actually need a somewhat of a different dye formula. Um, and this is because things like cotton will take to dye differently than silk, will take it differently than synthetics, will take it differently than wools. And typically we're going to have different fa um, fabrics with different fiber compositions in them in our um, uh, uh, collection. So we want all of our colors to look the same. We want 
this orange to look the same, whether we've dyed it in cotton or whether we've dyed it in wool or whether, no matter what we have. Um, so they all match. Um, so again, there's a lot of discussion between mills, between in, you know, internal um, design development about these colors. So um, our text version is we're going to create a name that we can easy, easily communicate um, about this color. So when we're talking about this color, we know exactly what it is. Um, and then let's call this, you know, you can, it doesn't really matter. You can call some something cute. So a lot of times people will name their colors um, according to the sort of theme of the collection. This is gonna be sort of our tropical sunset. So let's call this um, <clears throat> sunset orange. Okay. So now I have a name so I can discuss this color easily with my own design development team or a mill, and we all know what we're talking about. We're talking about this specific color. And again, it's important because maybe I have lots of different oranges. So now I know this orange is sunset orange and all the other ones are gonna have a different name. Now we also want to create a numerical value. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just click over back here and you see it is now on my color chip right here in the fill. I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna give me lots of different um, numerical values to choose from. Um, and this is important because it gives us a sort of technical breakdown of what the color uh, I, I have chosen is. So um, basically what we can do is we can sort of we can choose the hex code which is not too often utilized it's more if you're a web designer this is definitely what you're going to use so if you're doing sort of a website or something online this is what you're going to use because again the hex code is used in sort of html and it tells uh it, it gets put in the sort of website code to tell um uh you know the whatever the programmer or the website, what color things should be. Um, we're typically either going to use an RGB or a CMYK. Typically a CMYK because again, those are our sort of dye colors, um, printer colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and jot down my CMYK values. And what I'll do is now that I have them, I'll pop on back to my um, type tool and put them in. Don't worry that it gets cut off. We'll fix that later. So now um, we don't see it all, so I need to use my black arrow tool for the direct selection tool and just adjust. And let's remember some of our um, type presets. So to get this to look, this is fine, but over here, while I have this selected, I can go to properties and it's gonna give me a lot of different properties for my text. So maybe I want this a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. Ooh, I made it a little bit bigger. And maybe I want it centered, um, not aligned left, so I'm gonna start to scroll down to paragraph and choose the alignment that I want. Now it only applied to the bottom because I only have the bottom highlighted, so let's go ahead and highlight the whole thing. And then I'll get that. And then I can go ahead, of course, with my um, text tool and adjust it. Now remember, um, since we are gonna have a lot of text, I just wanna review a few of the text properties. So what I did with the text is I clicked and I dragged a box. Now that is gonna give me a box in which the text will um, have to fit in. Um, and once I do that, let's just use this. When I adjust the box with my arrow, the text size doesn't change. Um, just the shape of the text changes, okay? Now, um, to go ahead and contrast that, 
if I just click with the text tool, I get a text box that when I adjust it with the black arrow tool, the text will actually change size. Okay, and you can use either, just depends on what you want. And so here we have our first color. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to build out our colors. So this assignment is going to have you um, make about three to four colors in warm, three to four colors in cool, and three to four colors in neutral. So what I wanna do is for my second ch chip, I'm gonna simply copy Control C and paste my original chip. And this is a fast and easy way to ensure that all of my color chips are the same, which is, you know, kind of what you want. Now I can go ahead and just start sampling from my other colors in here, which is perfectly fine. You can go ahead and do that. Um, however, I want to show you another thing that Illustrator has to offer when we are making color palettes. Um, and really you can use it in any sort of illustration or whatever else, anything that involves color to ensure that you're making nice colors. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this one first. And so this is our base color, the one that we decided to use. and Whenever you double click on this or you know um, start to build a shape that needs a color, um, your color window is gonna pop up. Um, and with it comes a color guide. Now if you don't see this, um, come here and go uh, to your window menu and scroll down to color guide. Um, and here we have um, uh, what is going to help us I'm going to just get rid of the properties for a minute so we can, you know, just focus on one thing. And here we have a color guide, and it's going to auto-generate a color palette for us. So as we can see, this was kind of close to my next color anyways. Actually, it's even closer because um, how beautiful. It has nice, nice color combinations anyways, a nice palette. And uh, so this is our basically um, our generated color palette based on... Uh, specific harmony rules. Now harmony rules are, are basically derived from our basic color theory. Again, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, um, you can go watch the bonus video. But for our intents and purposes right now, we're just going to click down and it's going to give us all these different harmony rules. And colors are really like sounds. Like, <clears throat> So I don't know if we have any musicians in the class, but certain notes are going to sound really nice with each other, and that will create a chord. Um, same with colors. Certain colors are going to look really good with each other, and that's sort of, you know, these are all the, you know, basic chords that we're going to get out of this note or color. Um, and we can go ahead and sort of go down and choose from them what we like and sort of see what they have to offer. Now down here, we have not only the sort of primary hues or the, the basic hues, but we also have the shades and tints. And the tints will add white to it in incremental levels. So here right in the middle where the little arrow is, um, they call them active colors, but they're the colors based on you know our color palette right here. And we can take that color and we can sort of get different versions of that color by adding more white or adding more black, um, our tints and our shades. And of course, you can utilize any of these colors or these colors as well. Um, you know, at the end of the day, there's no set rule as to what you're going to do for your color palette, even though I just got over all, the, all these rules. Um, but, you know, as you can see, there's so many and there's so many little different varieties of um, colors that we use that um, at, at the end of the day, when you create your color palette, you're really just going to use your eye and take a look and do the colors seem pleasant together? Um, uh, do they seem to clash? Um, you know, it's going to be up to you and sort of developing your eye for color as a designer. Okay, so um, I'm going to sort of keep this up and we can sort of take a look at what's going on. 
I'll pop on over here. Let's make it. Now, see, it's basically the same, anyways. Um, just want to go ahead and make that a nice little black. And then let's copy uh, and paste another swatch. Maybe I'll go ahead and use my color guide for this one. Oop, got in isolation mode again. Okay, let's go back to this color. It was using black. Um, and pop onto my color guide. And I want to look once one that's going to go nice to here. Maybe that little pink right there is quite nice. That's getting the sort of pink in the water. Maybe I want it to be a little bit lighter, a little bit softer. So I'm going to not choose the active color, um, but I'm going to choose the tint. Now let's see, should I do anything more for my warm colors? I don't know. I don't see too many other. We got the sort of round pinks. We got the sort of yellows. We got a, a darker orange. So it might be good. You can do one more if you want. Again, it's three to four, so it's going to be up to you. But in any case, do remember to fill out your values. So what I'm going to do is um, copy this and paste it. And this will give me the same sort of text format for all of my little swatches. And let's go ahead and we'll just name this dark orange for now. And let's get the CMYK value. And just change it. So it's pretty close, yeah? Only the magenta content is different. All right. Now what you're gonna want to do is start to think about your arrangement. Now these are two separate things, so I'm gonna just adjust this so it's nice and centered under my swatch. And once it is, um, here's a really good technique that I, I probably should have told you already um, in the flats uh, assignment. But um, once you're building up anything in Illustrator, you're going to kind of get these units. And the units are going to be, you know, created from different things. So let's take this swatch as a unit. It's created from this circle and then the text. Um, and I'm going to want to move it around. And of course, I can easily do that by just highlighting everything. But there's a slightly easier way of doing it, and it's called grouping. So again, this is really useful for once you've um, completed a flat and want to just sort of quickly arrange it on a page or anything else like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this entire swatch, text and swatch included, and I'm going to go to Object, Group. And the keyboard control shortcut for this is just control G. So if you want to group without going to the object menu, you can hit control G, or you can right click on the highlighted elements and that will pop up as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select group and I'm going to show you what that does. So now when I want to move this around, I don't need to drop down my highlighting box. I can just click on it. Um, because assigning them as a group assigns them as one element. And I can go ahead and move it around and highlight both elements at once just by clicking it. So let's go ahead and make sure that this is centered and then do that. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing I want grouped. And again, we have other methods, so I'm just going to right click and go to group. So that would be another shortcut to do that. Now we can go ahead and really sort of easily arrange and adjust our um, elements. Okay, let's do this one. And again, one bad thing now is I can't individually uh, copy my text because it's grouped. So if you run into this instance where you want to ungroup it, well, highlight your grouped unit and go to ungroup. And that will break it down. So now I can go ahead and copy and paste just the text 
for my next one. And let's go ahead and let's call this um, <clears throat> Sunset Pink. No. <laughs> uh, perfect Pink. You can get those sort of funny little names. And again, let's update our CMYK value. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit T as my keyboard shortcut for my text tool. Go in, update the CMYK. I don't know if you guys have been starting to use your keyboard shortcuts or not yet, but they are super handy. And then there we go. So let's group it. Control G. And we'll place it. Nudge it down a bit. And nudge it over. Okay. So now that we have our sort of first rung here, let's go ahead and do our cool colors. So since I have this whole thing, what I can actually do is just copy and paste the entire thing. So now I have my whole sort of setup already. So again, that's a, one of the really great things about Illustrator is um, being able to copy and paste. It really cuts down on what you need to do. Um, and let's start on our cool colors. Remember our cool colors are blue and purple and greens. So I'm gonna do the first one. Ooh, I don't know how I keep, keep getting in isolation mode, I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna do this straight from in here and let's get some of this sort of we got this lovely sort of lavender color here. That's wonderful. Let's get a nice black stroke. You see, the, it's taking away my black stroke when I uh, sample with the um, eyedropper tool. But. And then let's go ahead and just continue on. So this would be perfect purple. I know. <laughs> um, Purple water, that's where we sampled it from anyhow. And let's go and change that CMYK value. over to our color guide maybe for the next one because I do want a green in here there's not a lot of green so let's see what might be a nice green for us and we can compare it contrast it to sort of other um, colors that we have this sort of deep rich green is really nice but again I can sort of click so anywhere I click it's going to change the base color so again we have oops, let's, let's get it for here And we can kind of see if it's going to work well. I drop her that, put it in here. Oh, there's some nice greens. I kind of like that. That other green was a lot lusher. Let's see what we have for here. Oops, I changed the color here. My bad. Got too crazy with the good thing I have a copy. Now I like I like that other green better. What was it? What a lovely green, right? And sort of got our tropical. Well, let's put it in. This might be a little bit dark. But let's fill it in. Actually, it looks quite nice, especially contrasted with that orange. 
And you know what's next. Let's name it. Huh, look at this. Okay, so what I did is, I'm not quite sure what I did, but um, I think on the text here, there we go. I gave it a border, and then I made it orange. Let's make it black again. And now let's fix this. And it's already in here, so. One more we got a lot of these little steely blues in here so um, again we can go to color guide to pick it or I can pick it straight from here okay now I'm gonna actually un well it shouldn't matter let's see let's see if it matters let's try now, if you're trying to get like a specific thing, it might be helpful to zoom in. So I want this sort of right here where the wave is breaking this kind of steely blue right in there. Perfect. Okay. So what happened is it also changed my text. So um, I guess it did it here. I just couldn't notice because it was... Just ungroup these two just to change the text. And I'm going to click in too much. Go back and just make that text black. And I'm assuming that this was also, yeah. Okay. Why didn't you change? Change. Okay, good. And let's give you a border. Okay. Okay. We're well on our way. I have all these guys together and they look pretty well lined up. So I still got to do my neutrals. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste for my neutrals. There's no other cools I really want. And um, again, there's not a ton of neutrals right in here. So I'm going to use the color guide mostly for this. So let's look for some nice neutrals. This kind of looks like our sort of sand, or maybe something kind of sandy. Right here. Ooh, that's nice, right? So let's go over here. Let's continue on. And... Actually, let's go here because they had some nice neutrals in this one. Just sort of darker brown, actually, that looks nice. So let's select this one. And it's a nice brown. Oh, we're going to have to 
change the text back too, so let's ungroup this for a hot second. And let's look for one more nice dark brown, kind of a reddish brown. Okay, and there's our neutrals. So now what I can do is, uh, again, I'm just gonna quickly uh, finish up here. kind of had fun naming colors and they don't need to make sense I mean you guys have all been to maybe to the nail salon and read the nail polish colors and some of them don't, just don't make any sense at all but they're fun to be black again. I shouldn't have grouped them quite yet. Just creating more work when I was supposed to make it easier. gotta be coconut, right? Okay, so now we are rounding up with our colors and I wanna make something specific because a lot of people will wanna use sort of black or white in their color palette and black and white are not technically colors. Um, the scientific definition of uh, black is the absence of all colors and white is the presence of all colors. Uh, in art, uh, it's the exact opposite. Black is the presence of all colors and white is the absence of all colors. Um, however, even though neither black and white are actually colors, um, we still have to put them on the color palette if we want to utilize them. So if you want to utilize black or white, go ahead. Now I have a lot of black sort of in this image, so I might go ahead and put in a uh, black color. So let's start to, I'm just gonna move this a little bit down and let's get these guys. So everything is done and labeled, so I'm gonna go ahead and Start grouping and arranging. Maybe they could be a little closer together. As can these guys. Just drop it down a little bit. And again, you can arrange them any way you want. You don't need to do a grid. You can be much more creative with it. Whatever you want to do, um, it's up to you. So I'm just gonna group all of these things, and then again, I can move them around the page wherever I want, okay? Um, now, I do kinda wanna put a black swatch in there, so let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> right after I grouped everything. So let's go ahead and ungroup. And just get one more down here. 
already center it. And I'm going to just go ahead and maybe it'll be black, but be a real close to Now let's just do black. All right, and of course our pure black is all K. All right, now let's add, now let's regroup. <laughs> Take the time to regroup. And again, we can now sort of put it on the page wherever we want. So I'm going to sort of zoom out and we're going to start to sort of think about overall composition. So maybe I'll put this here. Maybe I'll put this here. Start to sort of resize. nice sort of image here. All right, guys, I don't know why I'm just going in isolation mode so much. I'm too antsy with the clicks, I guess. Well, at least you get lots of examples on uh, how to get out of isolation mode. Okay, not bad. Let's just shift the whole thing down. And then I have the sort of right and left banks here to add my additional text. Now, the uh, again, you don't need to have your image, but if you have worked off of some sort of image, it's nice to have it there. It's nice, like a little bit of a reference. So let's just sort of finish it up. So I have these sort of coming here. So um, I might want to use the vertical type tool. So let's do a um, title. Let's call this the Tropical Sunset collection. That's maybe a bit long for this space, so let's just call it Tropical Sunset. Make it a bit bigger. Put it in place. And of course, let's have some fun with the font. So I'm going to highlight it, go to our properties. And let's find, you know, fun little, ooh. A little bit of a funner font. And then for composition, let's make one over here. And you see I copied and pasted it instead of um, making a new one. This is going to, uh, make sure that the sort of proportion and balance of it is the same. Because uh, if I made another one, so I did adjust this, um, uh, so it's going to have sort of its own proportions, and I want to match the proportions on this side. Let's go summer 2022. We can stretch that out a little bit if you want. Positioned right in the middle there. Let's bring it in. Okay, so there we are. Maybe if the last thing, actually, let's bring, bring all these things sort of in a little bit. And then, you know, anything that you want to do, I'm always a big fan of just throwing in a kind of border. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and make sure that my fill is nil and my border is black. And I'm just going to make a nice little border. I'm a fan of borders. And maybe let's pop up the stroke a little bit. kind of, you know, just frames the whole thing, makes it nice, easy peasy to do, and just makes it look a little bit more finished and professional. 
So there we are, we have our nice little color palette. And again, you have fun arranging it. Um, if you want to do something really fun, you know, I've had students be super creative with their color palettes. Um, you know, they will grab a picture of uh, a hand and every little swatch will be another colored nail polish. Um, I've had students do like little pictures of um, uh, uh, colored pencils and every little pe pencil tip is another color swatch. So, you know, be as creative as you want. And again, um, that's going to be sort of dependent on how comfortable you are with Illustrator. If you want to keep it simple like this and just do the simple swatches, that's fine. Um, but again, if you've, if you've had a little bit of experience with Illustrator or you feel like you're picking it up real quick, um, please feel free to have fun with it. Um, do something kind of fun and creative. You know, I've had students also do like bunches of cherries where each cherry is another swatch. Um, so, you know, have fun. Um, but this is your color palette. And of course, like everything else, you're gonna go ahead and when you're finished, uh, you're really gonna want to save two versions of this. You're gonna wanna save one as an .ai and the one you're gonna hand in, you're gonna save as a JPEG. Now, the reason you're really gonna wanna do both is because our subsequent uh, assignments, uh, our assignment, which is our plaid stripes and prints assignments, are going to be utilizing this color palette. And you're, what you're gonna wanna do is grab your color swatches and put them into our plaid print and um, stripe uh, uh, and work from there. So what you're gonna wanna do is first go to save as and find your USB. This is not for you, don't get excited. <laughs> Oh, that one doesn't exist, so I gotta pick the one that exists. And I'm gonna name it, you know, this is gonna be just for you, so you can name it anything you want. And then hit okay. And now, um, okay, whatever. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to export, export as, and you're going, this is the one you're going to save as a JPEG. And this is the one that you're going to hand in and you're going to name it your name color palette and export. Okay. All right. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, for our stripes and plaids. And we're gonna do uh, one more video with prints. The stripes and plaids ones are quick and easy. I think you'll be quite delighted in how quick and easy it is to make stripes and plaids in Illustrator. Um, so I'll see you then, bye-bye.